On this channel, I like to talk about the things I'm passionate about. And if there's two things that I'm passionate about, it's fantasy literature and alternative music. And I thought to myself, how can I make a video about both of these things at once? How can I forge these two disparate interests together into one beautiful video? Lord of the Rings characters as emo songs. That's... That's what we're doing today. That's what I came up with. <laughs> Gotta be assigning an emo song to each member of the Fellowship. I figured I'd just do the Fellowship today just for the sake of ease. If people like this video and want to see another one, I may do another one of these for different characters from Lord of the Rings outside of the Fellowship as well. I'm absolutely down to do that. I'm absolutely down to clown in that regard. Before we get into it, want to clarify what I'm personally considering emo music. I know some people can get kind of antsy about the different definitions between emo, pop punk, alternative, scene, but but they all fall under the umbrella category of alternative rock, and so that's really what I'm what I'm honing in on here. So when I talk about emo music, any of those genres are fair game. Although I have tried to stick to stuff that was big and popular when the emo boom was happening, you know, early 2000s, a little bit into the 2010s there. Alright, so it's now time to answer the question that no one except me has asked. But now that I've asked it, don't you want to know the answers? Which Fellowship characters are which emo songs? Let's start with Frodo Baggins himself, arguably the most emo member of the Fellowship. Look at him, he's so full of melancholy and woe. Now, at first I was tempted to go with Sugar We're Going Down by Fall Out Boy, just because of the number of times that Frodo falls over in the movies. I'm pretty sure someone made, like, a compilation on YouTube you can go and look at. He's always falling down, that boy. So that was my first thought, but I've gone with something else, because ultimately I think it stands to reason that the most emo member of the Fellowship gets assigned the most emo song. That's right, I'm G-noting you. Welcome to the Black Parade is the ultimate emo anthem. The tone of the opening, I think, reflects well the sort of hidden sadness and struggle and inner burden of Frodo's character. Plus, the chorus's refrain of we'll carry on can apply to how much Frodo carries on in his journey to destroy the ring. Obviously, he had Sam there to help him, but it can't be understated the amount of pure endurance that Frodo has to go through in the quest, constantly exposed to the ring trying to sap away his willpower. And when you consider how long the ring has actually been around Frodo, not just on the quest in the books or in the movies, but he's had decades of passive exposure to it, just leaving it back end while the ring was also there. The fact that he made it as far as he did before succumbing to the influence of the ring speaks volumes to the amount of willpower that Frodo himself has. His dedication to the task and his determination to carry on. The line in Black Parade, though you're dead and gone, believe me, your memory will carry on, could also apply to how Frodo feels after Gandalf's supposed death. It could also apply to how the other hobbits think of Frodo after he sails away to the Undying Lands. One final point. The big anthemic climax of Welcome to the Black Parade has the line, I'm just a man, I'm not a hero. I'm unafraid, I'm gonna show my scars. I've got a, a scar to show. There, there it is, on my, on my arm. You can't, you can't see it because my wristband's in the way. But it's there. There's another one. And I don't think Frodo ever truly thinks of himself as a hero. He is just a man, or hobbit, who is trying to do what is right. And when it comes to scars, after the quest, Frodo has no shortage of them, both physical and mental. But he's not afraid to show them. He's not afraid to tell Sam how he's been fundamentally changed by the quest and how he can never return to his normal life because of it. That's why he has to sail to Valinor. When Frodo says it never truly healed, he's not just talking about the wound he got at Weathertop. He's talking about the lasting trauma of the entire experience. And of course, another reason this song fits Frodo so well is because of the other wound that never truly heals. MCR breaking up. Next up, Samwise Gamgee. You may not be royal, but you, sir, are the true king of this series and of my heart. Sorry, Aragorn and Theoden. He ain't got nothing on this lad. I talked before about Frodo's ability to endure, but of course, Frodo's endurance would mean nothing without Sam there to support him. The success of the quest is in no small part due to the absolute love and loyalty of Sam to Frodo. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you! And when it comes to picking a classic emo anthem for Sam, there is absolutely only one option. I made a promise, Mr. Frodo. A promise. Don't you leave him, Samwise Gamgee. And I don't mean to. Have Faith in Me by A Day to Remember is a song that every time I listen to it makes me think about the relationship between Frodo and Sam. And it is also a big part of what inspired me to make this video in the first place. The parallels between Frodo and Sam's dynamic and the lyrics in this song, it's just so perfect. It fits so well I almost wonder if Jeremy McKinnon didn't write this song about Frodo and Sam specifically. Sam tells Frodo that he'll never let him go, and over and over he proves that promise. Sticking up for him when he thinks that Stride is a threat, sticking with him after Amon Hen, finding his body 
at Minas Morgul. When Gollum starts to come between Frodo and Sam, all Sam wants is for Frodo to have faith in him. And at the end, in Mount Doom, Sam doesn't let Frodo fall. He said he'd never let him go. And he never did. <coughs> Miriadoc Brandybuck and Peregrine Took. My Ian McKellen impression could could use some work, I admit. Now, Merry and Pippin are often reduced to being called the comic relief of the series, but I do think that does a disservice to their characters. I actually think those two have some of the most interesting and compelling arcs of the Fellowship, particularly Pippin's arc of learning to grapple with responsibility, plus the intensely strong friendship between Merry and Pippin themselves, and how they've been basically inseparable for all their whole lives, then in Return of the Kings they have to be separated and strike out and find their own paths. The reunion in Return of the King, when Pippin finds Merry on the battlefield and tells him he's gonna look after him. Tears every time. Anyway, I could go on for a while about how much I love these two, so I'll try I'll try not to get too sidetracked. If we look at Pippin right at the start of his arc, he is quite immature and not the most responsible. He is the youngest member of the fellowship. He's here to have a good time, and he is honestly feeling so attacked right now. But nevertheless, Pippin ends up having responsibility thrust upon him, and that scares him because he's never really had it. And that is why I'm giving him the MXPX song, Responsibility. Responsibility, what's that? Responsibility, not quite yet. Responsibility, what's that? Responsibility, not quite yet? Indeed, Pippin. Plus, it's just a very fun and catchy song, and I think nothing matches the personalities of these two better than fun and catchy songs. Bearing that in mind, Mary's song is My Friends Over You by New Found Glory. An absolute classic and a personal favourite of mine. As the story goes on, Merry visibly gets frustrated that his friends and people he cares about are out there fighting a good cause, and he can't really do anything to help him, or at least he doesn't feel like he can. Our friends are out there. They need our help. Everyone in this series cares deeply about their friends, but I do think Merry's friend-making skills and friend caring about skills are especially noteworthy. In the film, he helps Frodo escape the Black Riders even though he knows next to nothing about what's going on at the time. He just knows that his friend is in trouble and he wants to help him. At the council at Rivendell, he's the one who says that you'll have to tie them up in a sack to stop him and Pippin going on the quest with Frodo. He passionately defends his friends and their cause to the Ents at the Entmoot. He bonds with Eowyn when he's with the Rohirrim because they both are outcasts from the army in certain different ways. He teams up with Eowyn for the final battle and he helps Eowyn to kill the Witch King. Merry makes friends very easily and my God does he care about them. Merry puts his friends first, and that is why he gets My Friends Over You by Newfound Glory as his song. Let's talk about Legolas Greenleaf. For him, I'm going with Ignorance by Paramore. Couple reasons. One, it's a banger, probably my favourite Paramore song. I think it gets overshadowed quite a lot by Misery Business and the other singles from Riot, but Ignorance is great. You could say Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Second reason, Legolas can be quite ignorant. In the movies, Jackson and Bloom wanted to portray him as someone who was ignorant of death, because he's an immortal elf, it's something that he's never really experienced, which is why Gandalf's supposed death at the Mines of Moria hits him quite hard. It is quite literally the first time he's experiencing grief of that kind. And the final reason why Ignorance by Paramore is Legolas's song is because Frodo doesn't know who he is. In the entire movie trilogy, Legolas says three words to Frodo, those being And you have my bow. And at the end of Return of the King, when Frodo awakens and all the surviving members of the Fellowship come into the room to greet him, he calls every single one of them by their name except for Legolas. He just gives Legolas a confused look. You could say he treats him just like another stranger. Gimli. There is one dwarf in Moria yet who still draws breath. My John Rhys Davies impression could also use some work. Gimli is just a pure badass throughout the series, so he has to have a pretty badass song. I have a friend who's fond of saying that if Gimli had been the ring bearer, he would have done it. It would have taken 12 extra months and he would turn up covered in blood from the other side of Mount Doom, but he'd have done it. So that makes me think of the song One More Round by Newfound Glory, and in the music video for that, the band do end up covered in blood, or at least red paint. But, Resurrection only came out in 2014, so calling it an emo classic doesn't quite feel right, still feels a bit too recent. I did also consider Love Is Dead and We Killed Her by Dollskin, which is just a very badass song. Did you know I'm a killer? Stopping me tonight. But again, that album came out in 2019, so that's even more recent. Calling it an emo classic feels like somewhat of a misnomer. And you might think that me bringing up One More Round and Love Is Dead anyway is just an excuse for me to give Gimli three songs instead of one. Uh, but no, no you're wrong. That, that still only counts as one. That still only 
And that one song that I'm going with is not a single actually, it's more of a deep cut simple plan song. That song being, Me Against the World. It's a very punchy and aggressive badass song, and I believe it's the only simple plan song to feature a guitar whale. It's me against the world. very energetic and the song, the instrumentation feels like a force of nature and Gimli is nothing if not a force of nature. I can just very easily picture him cutting through orcs while this song plays in the background. So Me Against the World by Simple Plan is Gimli's song. Aragorn Elisar. Remember when I said that Frodo was arguably the most emo member of the Fellowship? That's because Aragorn, you could argue, it also fits in that category. Although I personally see him as more of the cool older goth that Frodo looks up to. Not realising that despite his outward mysterious and badass appearance on the inside he is just kind of a sad boy. But who can blame him for being sad? He misses Arwen. And with that in mind, the song I'm attributing to Aragorn is I Miss You by Blink-182. Hello there, the angel from my nightmare, the shadow in the background of the moor. So what makes Arwen the angel from Aragorn's nightmare? Well, the angel part is easy to answer. I mean, have you seen Liv Tyler? Aston answered. From my nightmare, however, Let's dive into that a little bit more. From my nightmare could refer to the fact that Arwen gave up her immortality to be with Aragorn is a source of conflicting emotions for him. Because while he loves her and must be happy that she wants to be with him, he also feels this intense guilt over the fact that, in a sense, her love for him will be what causes her death, at least in his mind. And it can't help that Elrond's probably standing over balconies looking disapprovingly at him all the time. And the line, the shadow in the background of the morgue, also plays into these themes of death and love and guilt. The line, this sick strange darkness comes creeping in so haunting every time feels like an appropriate counterpart to Aragorn's more somber moments when he reflects on his relationship with Arwen or when he feels conflicted about Eowyn's interest in him which really only serves to reaffirm how much he does love Arwen and most assuredly does not love Eowyn's soup Arwen is the one he wants to be with she is the one he misses Arwen is already the voice inside his head Boromir now what song for the son of Gondor well there are options certainly Dead by MCR The Day That I Die by Good Charlotte Consider Me Dead by Valencia uh, Dead on Arrival by Fallout that boy. Oh, what? What? Too soon? Yeah, you're right. For Boromir, I'm actually going with The River by Good Charlotte, and not just because he ends up in one. Although I'd be lying if I said that wasn't part of it. In the same way that The River is a kind of underrated Good Charlotte song, I think Boromir is a kind of underrated Fellowship member. Give them a moment, for pity's sake! Boromir is a warrior and a soldier and has a certain subdued aggression to him when he fights. An aggression which I think is also present in this song. The screams of On My Own in the chorus call to mind the fact that Boromir is kind of an outsider as far as the Fellowship is concerned. In the books particularly, he wasn't really part of the quest, he just happened to be travelling in the same direction and decided to travel with them. The song talks about redemption, with the protagonist of the song getting baptised by the river. And you could apply that to Boromir's redemption as he gives his life to defend Merry and Pippin after he tries to take the ring from Frodo. The song's opening line, As I Walk Through the Valley of the Shadow of L.A., is a reference to Psalm 23 from the Bible. No, no, not the Silmarillion, the, the Bible Bible. It's a passage that talks about resisting evil and temptation, and wouldn't you know it, Boromir is the one member of the Fellowship who succumbs to the temptation of the ring, falls prey to its influence. And the following line, The footsteps that were next to me have gone their separate ways, could easily apply to the breaking of the Fellowship and the whole situation that happens at Amon Hen. All of the different characters go their separate ways, Frodo and Sam off on the road, Merry and Pippin captured, the three hunters going after Merry and Pippin. All these overlapping themes of redemption, isolation, and temptation, and of course, ending up in a river. That's why I chose this song for Boromir. Gandalf now, last but by no means least, the only member of the Astari to actually do his damn job. That's right. It's because I do my damn job. <laughs> He is the oldest and wisest and of course the most powerful member of the Fellowship. A song to represent Gandalf has to be from one of the OGs of the genre. Has to be from a band who have been known to change up their style from time to time. A band who are more powerful than people give them credit for. A band who at one point seemed to die, but then came back stronger than ever. A band like Sum 41. Yeah, look, it's me. There was gonna be a Sum 41 song on this list at some point. And this is that Sum point. That Sum 41 point. Oh, 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 oh. So which Sum 41 song represents Gandalf? Sick of everyone. Even without the lyrical analysis, can you tell me I'm wrong? Just the name of the song alone. Although, Sick of Pippin specifically might be a bit more accurate. But it still conjures images of Gandalf's somewhat more grumpier moments. This new Gandalf's more grumpy than the old one. The opening line of Sick of Everyone is, while looking for the answers, only questions come to mind. What does Gandalf go looking for at the start of Fellowship? Questions. 
questions that need answering. Plus, Gandalf was sent on a holy mission by the Valar, along with the other Astari, to try and stop the Dark Lord Sauron. You could say, his fate was written in the Black Stars. And Gandalf is legitimately scared, not only of Sauron's power, but of the fact that he might fail in this quest. It might not seem like it on the surface, but he is full of self-doubt about whether or not he's up to the task, and whether or not what he's doing is the right way to go about it. And this self-doubt is only enhanced by the fact that everyone else in this group project decided to f*** off. But the lines from the song, I don't know how I came here, even how I got this far, and the pre-chorus, what am I supposed to do, also reflect this self-doubt of Gandalf's character. And of course, this song is a banger. Just the tone of the song, it feels like a good complement to Gandalf's power level. In addition to that, the artwork on the album this song is on is grey, like Gandalf the Grey. And when Sum 41 made their comeback in 2016, their lead single was called Fake My Own Death. I mean, obviously Gandalf didn't really fake his own death, he legitimately died and was sent back. But you know what, it's still a fun connection. It's just a bit of fun. We're having fun here. It was just a bit of fun. Oh, and Gollum is addicted by Simple Plan. I'm trying to That one's, that one's self-explanatory. Alright, so those are my personal picks for the Fellowship characters as emo songs. What a, what a ridiculous video concept. But if you enjoyed it, please do leave a like, subscribe for more of my nonsense, all of that jazz. Let me know in the comments what your personal picks would be, or if you disagree with any of the picks that I chose, or if you've got picks for any other characters in Lord of the Rings outside of the Fellowship. But yeah, any of that, leave it in the comments, I'd love to read it. So I feel like I've successfully merged my two passions into one video here, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and as always, I'll see you in my next one.